Hello everyone. So uh, a couple of weeks ago I made the video for parishioners here at Corpus Christi to inform you about the physical updates that we made uh, during the time of COVID. So when people come back to church, they just see things have improved. It's, and it's all for you. Yeah, the building is not for itself. It's a means to an end. So it's really for you. Uh, now, what I want to do is kind of a part two and highlight how things have been done in the spiritual realm uh, for the betterment of people during the time of COVID. So we haven't, we've have not been sitting around sort of twiddling our thumbs, anything but. So these are some of the things that some people may be aware of and more people may be aware of more of them, but perhaps there's a lot of people who are not aware of a lot of things. So some of the things that have been happening, spiritual updates uh, for parishioners here at Corpus Christi. Uh, one thing we've had is the, uh, the call and care program. Uh, and that's been very well received. It's sort of coming to um, kind of a, a close right now. But if it needs to be reactivated, we'll do that immediately. And that's really to call and show people that we care about them. We're thinking about them, we're praying for them. Can we help them in any way whatsoever? It started with the seniors, didn't get quite down to my age, which I think most people know, I'm 61. But we got to, I think, 75 or 70. And we, there are a lot of people were called in the parish and really appreciative of that. Of course, there's the streaming of the masses. Everybody knows about this. I talked about it in the, the physical updates, but it's really all about the soul, ultimately. Uh, daily Mass and the two Sunday Masses, the 5 p.m. and the 10 a.m., which I want to continue uh, after COVID is done and gone in history. Even if we never have a pandemic again, I think it's really important we continue to offer that to reach out to people. People are sick in bed, shut-ins, fall in the ways, you name it. So there's... Um, and there has been a, a real desire to, on my part to keep parishioners linked with the church and the mass, which is why I had it installed last year. So I know it's not the same, and for parents it's been really difficult, you know, to have your kids focus. Uh, it, and online can never be better. Never, ever, ever, ever. Uh, the, the, viewing mass on TV can be, it's fraught with distractions. However, it is better than nothing. And it is something that keeps us linked. And we should never underestimate the power and the importance of making spiritual uh, communions with the sacrifice of the Mass when the Mass is offered and making spiritual communions. That's like a talk unto itself. So, uh, you know, keep working with your kids in these last months before a full possible return to the church. Uh, optional masks, perhaps even no masks. Uh, maybe September, October, is, at least that's what I'm hearing. So we've been able to stream also other important events, the First Communion Mass, we were blessed to be able to do that, and the Confirmation Mass, it was like right on the cusp, like right on the, the day after, or the day of actually, uh, the, the relaxing of protocols. Youth ministry activities, this weekend, uh, last weekend, and this weekend we've been able to have CCO, a Catholic Christian outreach uh, missionaries here in the parish, and that really was all prepared online. And they're here, although they're able to be here physically, the events have been able, we've been able to, uh, to stream the events, Adoration on Friday nights, and uh, their testimonies on Sunday. So that is, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to keep our youth connected. So youth ministry activities, not only with the CCO missionaries, but the young adults. We plan a holy hour of adoration near the end of July and the following months after that. Both present here in the church, hopefully more and more, but still we'll keep it open online because we always want to reach out to that person who just may be searching, who may be out there. You never know, um, <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit knows. Young Families Ministry. Uh, gathering, we want, we've been gathering young families online to support each other every third Sunday of the month at 3 p.m. We're going to keep that going. Hopefully there'll be in-person opportunities for the young families because they really value and need the support of each other to know they're not alone. They have each other for support. But right now it's all by Zoom. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual, uh, physical reality, but it's made possible through the online ministries. 
parish rosary every Sunday, 4.30 p.m. We'll see how long that will keep going, but you know, so far we have sometimes anywhere from 25 to even 45, maybe 50 people come out and we pray the rosary every Sunday afternoon at 4.30. Men and women's group have been started here in the parish every second and third Mondays of the month. And this is open to all men and women of the parish age, ages 18 and up. It's an opportunity for gathering, for formation, for community, and it's right now, you know, with it being all online, it's been made possible through our Zoom accounts. Uh, <clears throat> it's an opportunity for people to conveniently, after a long day's work, gather and, you know, be formed in the Catholic faith. And we're hoping, we're praying to be able to raise up leaders, uh, to really lead others. You know, I received that in the seminary. Now, I want to do my best to pass that on to you to raise up leaders who can then raise up leaders. It's one of the great laws John Maxwell's uh, Laws of Leadership. And this year we had RCIA online via Zoom again. Without that, basically RCIA would have been toast, to use a rather pedestrian expression, but it wouldn't have happened. So it's been a blessing. It's not as been as good as in person, but it's been a blessing that we've been able to do that online. We've had prep classes online via Google Meets. Again, it was not easy. But, uh, but better than no classes. And the prep teachers have really worked hard to kind of make it possible and then do their best to teach the faith to the children at home after a, a day of school. <clears throat> any connection, any engagement is so important as a bridge from what I call the then to now and even to tomorrow, the so-called tomorrow, the next day and the next day and the next day. Preparation, uh, baptismal preparation classes have been online. They're online now. And we may, not sure, uh, we're assessing it, may keep them online, at least in part, maybe a hybrid, because it's really beneficial for families, for young parents who are, find it sometimes very difficult to come out to baptismal prep classes with their babies. Marriage appointments and a lot of uh, marriage paperwork is now filled out online uh, via Zoom. So we've been using, like a lot of people, uh, Zoom throughout the year. Many appointments are now made easier via Zoom or Google Meets. This is, will not, there will not be a total turnover to the e-world, like, as I call it, the electronic world, but it is a great alternative and can and does save people a lot of time to be here during the day when it is uh, difficult for many reasons. So these are some of the uh, efforts, initiatives that we have taken throughout the year. I hope it helps you to understand some of the things that uh, have been taking place. Some of you have been a part of this and are a part of this. Some of you may not be aware of what's been going on. I hope this helps you to understand that we've been doing this for you because that's what it's about. The building, the structure, it's all about you, your soul, and souls of your children. God bless you.